Welcome back to Indianomics. We have been discussing with uh, three experts, two from Aurangabad and one from Pune, on what has created this huge drought in Maharashtra and what are the solutions. Is banning sugarcane a solution at all? Well, uh, let me uh, first go to the lady. Uh, Parinita, what, uh, you said that this is entirely flawed management of water. Uh, uh, can you begin by saying what should be, uh, what were the mistakes and how should they be rectified? Uh, right. I'll give you just one small example because I think examples speak mm. much more loudly than, uh, you know, th theories. Mm. If you look at Solapur, which is one of the worst drought-affected districts in Maharashtra, mm. also has the largest concentration of sugar factories, the largest area under sugarcane. Mm. Possibly everything that can go wrong in a region, uh, that can be contradictory in a region, exists in Solapur. At the same time, with some... Uh, a really visionary leadership in form of uh, the new uh, the collector Mr. Tukaram Munde, mm. the drinking water problem in Solapur is solved to a large extent. There mm. are still problems. Mm. They would always exist because the region has received 193 millimeters of rainfall. Mm. It's you know it's unthinkable. It's less than half of what Rajasthan received this year. Mm. But at the same time, the drinking water is not so much of a problem because we need to understand the nature of drinking water. Mm. By definition, we need very less water for drinking and it's a source which can be secured if there is some management around it. Solapur is showing the way through number of multi-pronged strategies and ways forward like securing the resources, uh, groundwater recharge and a number of things, mm -hmm. pipe and extension etc. We are discussing drinking water. Yes. Uh, you know the section 144 is clamped on uh, Latwood as well as in Parbani. Mm -hmm. Tankers are given police protection, not people. Mm -hmm. These are the tankers which are given police protection. Now, how did we reach there? Mm -hmm. It was like uh, Mr. Putandere said very rightly, it's not a tsunami. It gave ample notices. Mm -hmm. At the same time in Maratwada, we had 2,30,000 hectare, 2, hectares under sugarcane this year, mm -hmm. out of which very less came because it burnt out. Now who is losing out in this? The farmers are losing out in this. Having said that, is banning sugarcane the way out? See, sugarcane is a, it, it's, it's a symptom. It's not the reason. The real malaise in the system right, lies at the fact that we do not have water management we do not have a system which encourages rain-fed crops like pulses and oil seeds, mm. which we are importing, spending mm. thousands of crores of foreign exchange. I, I take your point entirely. Uh, that is exactly what I'm looking for in terms of solutions. Uh, 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 Professor Purandre, you were speaking about wrong water laws and wrong water regulation. Can you also tell us whether you can de-sugarcane some places and... Uh, in, put in policies that go towards less uh, water consuming crops like tour, like uh, uh, pulses. Yeah, that can be done. In fact, we have, we have got some sufficient water laws which are not wrong, which are not, which, those are not being implemented. That is the main problem. We have got nine irrigation laws. Mm -hmm. Out of nine irrigation laws, we have got rules for only one irrigation act. Mm -hmm. That is the more main problem. Then we have got MWRRA Act, mm -hmm. which speaks about Maharashtra Water Regula Regulatory Authority. Mm -hmm. We boast that it is the first water authority in India. For all practical purposes, this MWRRA has been a silent spectator. Mm -hmm. And it has not done anything to resolve the problems. Mm -hmm. So that is the, another point. Mm -hmm. So if we have very good laws, if we implement those laws, if we maintain our systems, if we shift from uh, supply side management to demand side management, mm -hmm. uh, gradually change the cropping pattern, improve irrigation efficiencies, mm -hmm. uh, in, maintain our canals and distribution system in a good manner, and do uh, water planning in a at proper time and proper in a proper manner mm. the problem can be solved mm. it is not that it is it is impossible it, okay. is, it is quite possible it can be done okay. the way tukaram munde has done in riga in sholapur mm. similar things can be done in the field of irrigation as well okay. they are not doing it so what you need is uh, really a, a visionary administration uh, as well or administrators as well uh, okay uh, mr divan uh, you were very vocal about how much sugarcane uh, sapped up water and left so little for Latur. Now, if we have to, uh, you know, uh, de-plug from the sugarcane economy and take the ecosystem towards, say, a pulses economy or, uh, you know, any other crop, how does one do it? There are, There is a lot of livelihood involved in sugarcane. How do you de-sugarcane the areas around Latur? Yeah, I think that has to be done gradually. 
that cannot be done you know by making laws and forcing the people to give up sugar cane no can it be done can it be problem. done for instance uh, by well, providing I, I can, I, can it I be done by providing three, minimum prices for pulses uh, that's what i mean the main advantage uh, from sugar cane no, apparently no. is the karkhanas are buying them whereas if you bought pulses you're not even sure of the no, I, procurement I think, will procurement i think help? the people have to be motivated i think the people have to be motivated in three different ways i'll tell you what those three different ways are mm. there is one village called village sherpura mm. in kalam mm. taluk mm. of latur that is th about 30 kilometers from latur the sarpanch there has reduced the sugarcane plantation to half mm. the hectare has been reduced to half and whatever sugar cane they are growing is on drip irrigation that is one thing mm. and another thing is the rest of the land they are using by uh, using for uh, cultivating the uh, vegetables like cauliflower and the cucumbers and such okay. other things uh, under shadow net with drip irrigation so they have reduced the volume of water they are using mm -hmm. and they are getting the crop the farmers are getting the money that is one example that can be replicated elsewhere mm -hmm. another example is an example from temburni village in nanded district mm -hmm. in temburni village another sarpanch who was a civil engineer mm -hmm. he he brought in a scheme of uh, creating the soap pits Uh, in every house mm. and he asked all the people to uh, release the uh, waste water inside the soap pits and not release the water in the uh, village roads okay. uh, these soap pits have reduced the uh, uh, waste water from the uh, okay. village it has reduced the proportion of the mosquitoes and as a benefit as a bonus it has recharged the village well so that the village even in high summer mm. has plenty of drinking water, water that is another example that can be replicated everywhere okay. yeah water harvesting mm. and the third thing is that mm. uh, in marathwada all over i feel that the crops which are less water intensive such as the pulses as you say mm. or soybean mm. or jowar you know mm. sorghum that is the most yes. uh, traditional crop from marathwada mm. the farmer should be promoted to uh, take these crops mm -hmm. and the farmer should be provided with uh, value addition mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, sources for these crops for example from jowar one can very well manufacture starch mm -hmm. one can manufacture uh, molasses yes. uh, for sale at the village level Uh, the pulse factories and the solvent extraction plants could be run at the village level this Point kind of value addition if it is given mm. i think gradually mm. the people will turn away from uh, sugar cane that cannot be done suddenly okay last word uh, uh, to the lady uh, uh, parinita what would you say are uh, uh, some of the key takeaways from solapur itself or from other areas that you have covered what would be your to do list Uh, to the government of maharashtra and more importantly the administration and people the citizens absolutely uh, i think the one of the biggest lessons from solapur uh, uh, albert we need to understand that in solapur it's not as if all the problems have been solved mm. but what we see that they are on the right track is also the focus of the administration on giving more profit two crops other than sugarcane that this transition cannot happen uh, like uh, the expert says this transition cannot happen in vacuum it cannot happen overnight uh, we need to uh, i'll just give an example mm. sugarcane actually gets an indirect subsidy of about 5 lakh rupees per hectare if you calculate mm. the fertilizers pesticides okay. the uh, agriculture the electricity that you need to pump out water when you compare this with pulses or oil seeds they don't need anything they just grow on rain they need very little of fertilizers and pesticides but the problem is there is someone to fight with for sugarcane at least if it's in the form of factories there is some infrastructure in place with pulses there has been really very little procurement even in this year in marathwada mm. it's not so much of the minimum support prices mm. not the msps which is pretty okay mm. but the procurement there mm. are no centers the procurement just stops right in the middle of uh, the season 
Uh, same as with the case with oil seed. So I think the government needs to have this more uh, nuanced understanding of the problem and not only the problem, also the solutions which are linked to rain-fed agriculture. And you know, rain-fed agriculture is not an exception. 85% mm. of Maharashtra actually practices rain-fed agriculture. So any push, any support to this agriculture means support to a vast majority of people, mm. which is, uh, you know, at the core of things. Uh, the second thing is water management, water resources management has to be more transparent and participatory than it, what it is right now. There is one of the biggest problems in Maharashtra is that there is absolutely no transparency and no accountability around the, ag the irrigation infrastructure as well as the irrigation management. Mm -hmm. And so we are left at the end of the drought season, we are just left with questions. And we are just left with this, you know, this gaping thing that we have told you so, which doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, steps towards making the water resources establishment more transparent is one thing, more participatory is one thing. Uh, we have some good examples like the Jalayukta Shivar movement coming up. People are pitching in and we are hoping that uh, things will change uh, possibly for good if all these things come together. Okay, out of time, uh, Parinita, Mr. Purandri and Mr. Divan, thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. We are out of time, but we are not out of hope and not out of examples and ideas. Well, first and foremost, as Professor Purandri said, a drought gives you notice. It is not like a tsunami that hits you unnoticed or uh, instantly. So. The point is to take decisions hereafter. And again, as uh, Parinita said, it doesn't take a lot of water for ensuring drinking water. So clearly planning is what is needed. Uh, first up, uh, when a drought gives notice, uh, collectors across and uh, corporators across the state need to ensure that drinking water is uh, uh, ensured for the citizenry. The second, Laws need to be implemented. Nine irrigation laws, only one of them have sub-rules. The need to, uh, for the administration to ensure that sub-rules and regulations are made so that we prepare for the next problem. Third, maintenance. I mean, this is routine work. Maintaining canals, maintaining channels, maintaining water bodies. Uh, even the regular work of administration has been ignored. Extension services obviously have broken down. That needs to be uh, set aside, uh, set in order. And finally, how do you break the political economy of sugarcane since that doesn't seem to be the most appropriate crop for, say, a region like Marathwada or even uh, places like Solapur? The way is to create a political economy in favor of pulses, in favor of uh, crops that don't absorb so much water. So uh, the procurement, procurement of uh, pulses needs to be ensured at some price, preferably at a higher price when there is distress, as well ensuring that an ecosystem for vegetables and other crops that require less water. There's man's work to do and the way has been shown. Uh, one of the perennial truths in economics is don't waste a crisis. Let's hope we have not wasted this one. Thank you very much for watching this edition of Indianomics.